Hi, this is Galit Goldfarb and thank you very much for joining me here today. Today I'm going to be talking about spirulina and whether you should supplement with this or not. Well, spirulina is considered a complete food since it contains all of the amino acids and essential fats that we humans need. You really want to incorporate it into yours and your children's diet on a regular basis to add nutrient density to their menu and to your menu as well. Being so nutrient dense, spirulina is great for personal health and it is also ecologically sound, making it an excellent option for ensuring food security in the near future, especially in developing countries. What's more, it's relatively mild in taste, so you can add it to many, many different foods. In this video, I will cover some of the major benefits of consuming spirulina on a regular basis and how to best supplement with this amazing food source while avoiding some possible negative consequences. But firstly, let's talk about what spirulina is. Spirulina often lists among many superfoods, including kale and blueberries, but spirulina is in fact a cyanobacteria. It's a group of bacteria that obtain their energy from photosynthesis from the sun and do not need an organic carbon source to thrive, meaning that they do not need to obtain food from anything outside themselves, which is quite amazing. <laughs> spirulina grows in water in a temperature of about 30 degrees Celsius, which is about 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pH of about eight and a half and above, meaning it, it's an excellent food. It, it, it's very alkaline and it's an excellent food to grow in third world countries that have hot weather, such as Africa and India. Spirulina has been available as a food source for humans for millennia and is now being recognized as a as an very important well of health. In fact, when considering the amount of nutrients it holds per gram, it is regarded as the most nutritious food on earth. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the benefits of spirulina. There are many health benefits and an outstanding amount of nutritional content in spirulina. Spirulina contains protein, uh, calcium, magnesium, potassium, many vitamins from the B group, the vitamin C, vitamin A, as well as K, and iron, where it helps prevent anemia. And those are just the most prominent nutrients found, but there are many, many others uh, contained in this superfood. Spirulina has significant antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, as well as immunomodulatory activity. And it is very, very alkaline in nature, which helps reduce the acidity that normally is typical in diets of the Western world that are rich in animal products. Another important fact is that spirulina has the highest amount of chlorophyll of any known food source. Chlorophyll is the pigment, pigment that gives um, the plants their green color like spinach and kale. So chlorophyll is very, very beneficial to our health and it has excellent anti-aging properties. It helps with many, many skin conditions. It reduces body odor. It can be used as a deodorant. It helps uh, heal wounds and it has immune stimulating properties and it also fights certain types of cancer. Now, recent studies are also looking at the effect of spirulina on viral infections and swelling due to high levels of chlorophyll that it contains. Chlorophyll is, is well known for detoxification properties, helping remove toxic metals and other pollutants from the body by acting as a chelator. Now with such a sizable nutritional value concentrated in such a small amount of food, spirulina is highly, highly beneficial for all populations, especially for malnourished populations, even those living in the modern world but have poor dietary habits, and also very, very good for vegans. Spirulina is extremely rich in protein. In fact, when it's dried, then you have about 60 to 70% of protein inside uh, the dried product, dried spirulina. And with regards to vitamin B12 in spirulina, the evidence is still inconclusive as to whether the spirulina, um, it, the consumption of spirulina offers sufficient active vitamin B12 for vegans. Um, but for now, you still want to supplement with uh, vitamin B12 if you are a vegan, even if you're consuming spirulina because the evidence is still inconclusive. Now, spirulina is also highly beneficial for helping many, many disease conditions, for example, diabetes and heart disease. There is a premise that spirulina can help manage some of the symptoms of diabetes as it is shown to normalize blood glucose levels making spirulina supplements beneficial for both people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. 
Um, it is important to note that spirulina's known antioxidant properties are also responsible for keeping the blood vessels in good health, which supports both diabetes and also heart disease. Now, the next benefit lies in uh, spirulina's known ability to lower cholesterol levels and thereby it reduces a person's risk for heart disease. It's more specifically, it, spirulina reduces LDL, the ba considered bad cholesterol, and increases HDL, which is considered the good cholesterol. Now, the role in preventing heart disease is from spirulina's major anti-inflammatory, wound healing, and antioxidant properties. Now, spirulina also supports weight loss. A small study has shown that ingesting spirulina boosts metabolism. In the study, several people who took spirulina ended up with improved metabolism that caused them, uh, helped them to lose weight and improve their overall quality of life. Now, spirulina also reduces allergies. It especially seems to affect some widespread allergies, including uh, allergy to pollen, animal dander, and um, house dust mite allergies. Spirulina reduces part of the allergic responses and symptoms, which include a runny nose and sneezing. This has been proven through a few studies as well. Now, other diseases, there are many, many conditions that are unexplained by modern medicine, and these can definitely benefit from the detoxifying properties of spirulina, which may reduce the symptom, especially the removal of the heavy metals that spirulina is known to do through the chlorophyll content. Now let's talk about spirulina supplements. You can get spirulina supplements in both powder or tablet form, and each type of supplement has its own benefits. In powder form, for example, most manufacturers use less or even no fillers at all than used, and the more is used in the tablets. Now, powders are also easily added to salads and to soups, and it's very, very easy to incorporate them into your food. Tablets, on the other hand, are more convenient. They are easily stored, easily transported. They have a short, a longer shelf life than the powder. It, they have a shelf life of about three years, the tablets. But there are some cautions that I need to mention because it's a wonderful, wonderful food, but there are still some cautions. Special care should be taken if you're taking other certain medications. Spirulina may weaken the effect of immunosuppressant drugs because it increases the um, immune activity. So you don't want to take spirulina if you're taking immunosuppressant drugs, especially after a, a transplant of any organ in the body. Spirulina may also interfere with blood clotting drugs, including warfarin, since spirulina itself is a blood thinner and may increase a person's risk of bleeding. Also, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may also heighten spirulina's blood thinning effects. So you may uh, wish to be careful if you're taking blood thinning um, drugs. Also, people who have the genetic condition phenylketaurea, uh, PKU for short, are recommended to avoid spirulina. And lastly, since spirulina does contain iodine in, uh, in quite um, measurable amounts, you want to take uh, supplements with caution if you suffer from hyperthyroidism. Spirulina is definitely an excellent supplement. So now let's talk about dosage. If you don't suffer from any of the conditions that I just mentioned and you don't take any of the medications that I mentioned, then you can safely take one teaspoon of spirulina powder or one to two uh, 500 milligram tablets uh, five times per week. The 500 milligram tablets are the standard. This is how spirulina is normally sold. You may slightly wish to increase the dosage at a time when you're under a lot of stress. And for women, I do recommend during menstruation taking it throughout the whole week um, two tablets or one uh, teaspoon every single day. And since spirulina has been found to increase alertness, I do recommend taking spirulina supplements in the early morning or latest at lunchtime. Now for children that are over four years of age, they can consume about half the amount of adult, um, the recommended adult quantities. Now, if you're an athlete and you want, and you, you're during competition uh, periods, you you can actually double the amount of the uh, adult dose. Most importantly, it is very crucial to buy spirulina from trusted brands because it may be grown in contaminated water that may contain even heavy metals and other uh, toxins in the water. So you want to make sure that you're buying it in um, from a very good brand that 
is keeping the spirulina and is growing it in healthy, clean water sources. And I have a few recommend recommendations under the video that you can see in the comment section. Now, in the end, with all the known positive effects of spirulina, you are highly advised to include it in your diet if you wish to leave a healthy, lead a healthier uh, lifestyle for you and for your children. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, you su please subscribe to my channel and ring the notifications button so that you'll get updates every time I upload a video. And visit my website at www.thegorilladiet.com for many, many programs um, to, to help you lose weight and achieve the health that you desire. And my blog is there. Um, so thank you very much for joining me today.